it looked so close, but I was feeling horrible. A few months ago, Japan opened up to tourists for the first time in almost three years. So this summer is a great time to hike Mount Fuji, and here's an even better way to avoid the crowds. If you've ever heard someone say, I climbed Mount Fuji, the truth is they probably climbed it from about halfway up to the summit. Only 1% of people who climb Mount Fuji actually start from the base. So why should you hike Mount Fuji from the bottom? Quieter trails, it's more scenic, and you get the sense of accomplishment for actually climbing the entire mountain. I did do a really, really bad vlog when we were there in 2019, so you might see that on my channel, but I've decided to update this and kind of cut and actually give the information that is really required because my last one was not very informative. Be realistic with your level of fitness. Be prepared to hike five to six hours for two days straight with a really drastic change in elevation. The elevation at the base is almost at sea level and the elevation at the top is 3,776 meters. That's a lot of elevation to gain in two days and the weather can be varied even in the summer. When I did this climb, I wasn't a hardcore hiker by any means. I was relatively fit, but it was still really difficult due to the elevation change. And honestly, I almost didn't make it. So now that you've decided, yes, you definitely want to do this hike, let's go ahead and start some planning. So let's start with some of the basics. Some of these you can find almost anywhere, but I'll just go through them quickly. Station Zero is at the Shrine, which is one of the starts to the Yoshida Trail, which is the one that we took. Fifth station is in the middle of the mountain, and 10th station is at the top. The hiking season normally is anywhere from July 1st to about mid-September. It depends on, base on how late the snowfall is or how early snowfall is, so it can close at any time. Keeping that in mind, do not go on August 11th, which is Mountain Day. It's a public holiday in Japan, and because it is called Mountain Day, a lot of people go out to mountains and they do hiking, so it is very busy on this day. Even if it's not a public holiday, try and avoid the weekends. The weekends can still be really busy. And I'm just gonna go through kind of a brief packing list and explain a few of the things that I think are really, really essential. If you are a hiker, these are probably things that you already know, but even if you have hiked a lot, some of these things are different in Japan than maybe other countries. Probably the most important one is cash. Nowhere on the mountain accepts cash. There are no ATMs and everything as you go up the mountain gets more expensive. So water at the eighth station is going to be more expensive than water at the fifth station. So I highly recommend you bring more cash than what you think you need and especially 100 yen coins for bathrooms. A portable charger, layers, I've already talked a lot about how cold it can be at the top of Mount Fuji, Some, somewhere around freezing is what it normally is, and at the base of Mount Fuji, especially during the hiking season, can be really, really hot and humid, so make sure that you bring lots of layers so you can put on and take off as required. Two pairs of underwears and socks so that you don't have to rewear them, sturdy hiking boots, especially when you're descending the mountain. Headlamps because you're going to be hiking in the dark if you want to go see sunrise. Lots of bottles of water, anti-back and toilet paper just in case. A rain layer because sometimes bad weather can come in towards the top of Mount Fuji and you want to be prepared. Eye mask and earplugs no matter where you stay on Mount Fuji you're going to be next to people so you want to make sure you have a good night's sleep without disruption. A buff or a face mask for dust. Sunscreen. Trash bag so that you can take all your trash with you. Snacks, so at every station you do have the opportunity to buy some snacks or sometimes a bowl of ramen, but keep in mind that the food gets more expensive as you go up the mountain. So in terms of wearing masks in Japan, I would highly suggest you just follow what the current guidelines are. And in fact, there's a new one coming out on March 13th, 2023. I just went to Japan a couple months ago, and even though there are these mask guidelines in place, I would say probably about 95% of Japanese people wear masks indoors and outdoors, so that's up to you. As for wearing a mask on Mount Fuji, I had difficulty enough breathing without a mask, so that I'll leave that one up to you. I'm so sorry for how awkward my dog is. I feel like he wants to start talking to the cameras. Anyway, I probably need to take him for a walk anyway, so why don't you come with me? So we took the Yoshida Trail, which is one of the most popular trails to take, but we started from the Sengen Shrine, which is at the base. I'm gonna put the name of the Shengen Shrine because 
it's really, really long. And, um, but it's a beautiful place to start and you kind of get to stop, you get to have a little quick little prayer at the Shinto shrine and before you start your journey. So essentially from Tokyo, we for some reason I couldn't say Fuji-san at the time. So I'm going to just go over this again. So we took the train from Tokyo to Fuji-san Station, which is one of the main stations. From Fujisan Station, we walked about 30 minutes to the Sengen Shrine that I mentioned earlier. And from the shrine, that is the historical start of the trail from the, for the pilgrimage to the summit. Please make sure that you've downloaded all your maps necessary at the Sengen Shrine before you start your trail. So in my opinion, one of the coolest parts of the Yoshida Trail is seeing the old abandoned stations. The stations weren't getting used very much, so they just closed. And you can't really go inside of them because most of them have fallen apart because they're from the Edo period. So they could be anywhere from the 1600s to the 1800s. So please make sure you keep your distance from those. There are also these stone sculptures that appear every time you get to a new station. And you can see at these that people have left little offerings. They might have left a little bit of sake or some coins. So please make sure you don't disturb those and just respect it because all of these stone sculptures are important in the Shinto religion. So a couple ways to avoid altitude sickness that really worked for me was taking small steps, not taking these like gigantic leaps like you're climbing. When we did this hike in 2019, one thing my husband made sure that we did was taking small breaks. So literally like just a five minute break whenever you're tired. I feel like for me, this really was the key for actually making it to the top because we did see a lot of people that stopped for a long time. And especially when you're getting closer to the summit, people are stopping and they're taking these long breaks. Your body is so cold after you stop and your muscles kind of seize up. So I really suggest that if you're feeling it, if it's really hard, take a break, but don't take a long break. And the last one is just drink plenty of water. Now this next one, I hate that I even have to say this because it seems like anywhere in the world that you go and you want to go to an air, a beautiful nature area, you always end up finding litter there. And it's so disappointing bring a trash bag with you. Because there are no trash cans, rubbish bins, garbage cans, whatever you want to call them. There are none of those anywhere on Mount Fuji. So all of the stuff that you bring with you, all your snacks, all your bottles, they're gonna have to go somewhere. So bring a trash can and fill it up. You can stick it outside of your backpack and bring it home with you. It's especially disappointing because Japan is such a clean country. Japanese people, it's like ingrained in their society that they clean up after themselves. I wish it was the same thing in every society. We got to the fifth station and I just saw a bunch of litter everywhere. And I knew that this wasn't Japanese people. These are tourists and they're giving foreigners a really bad name. So please take your litter with you. Mount Fuji also has like a country code and there's a lot of really good points on it, but I think the main takeaway is just leave it exactly as you found it, if not better. So another thing is, is that the descent can be really, really hard on your knees. I saw a lot of people walking backwards and with all these people walking down a lot faster than they were walking up, it creates a lot of dust. And so I recommend like a face buff, like I said, or a face mask just to kind of filter out all of that dust that's gonna be flying up in the air. All right, so I am back. Strider is walked and he is fed. So let's continue. The Japanese government highly, highly, highly discourages you to take a train from Tokyo, climb the mountain, and climb back down. It's called bullet hiking, and it can be really, really dangerous because a lot of people get altitude sickness, which then requires like a mountain rescue or something. So you need to stay one night on Mount Fuji, so where can you stay? So in my opinion, there are two options, especially if you want to do the entire route from base to summit. You can, number one, you can hike to the fifth station and stay there the night. Or option number two is you can hike up to the seventh or eighth station and stay in a mountain hut. We chose to stay at the fifth station because we were trying to avoid the crowds. Most of the people that go up to Mount Fuji, they start at station five, they hike up to their mountain hut on station seven or eight, then they wake up before the sun rises up to the summit so they can watch the sunrise. So this is the time period that you're gonna have the most people on the mountain. It's gonna be before sunrise, it's completely pitch black. You're literally just gonna be following headlamps all the way up the mountain until you get to the summit to watch the sunrise. The thing is with the sunrise is a lot of times you're not even gonna see anything. If you're extremely lucky, you'll get up there on a clear day and see the full sunrise. 
This is really rare though. If you decide to stay on the 7th or 8th and hike up with everybody else, you get up to the top, you sit there with everybody and thousands of your closest friends to watch the sunrise and it's completely gray. That's gonna be a huge disappointment. We also woke up early to see the sunrise, but we left the fifth station a couple hours before sunrise. We got to about like a little bit north of the sixth station and we saw the sunrise from there. It was a little cloudy, but we were actually above the clouds, and so we were able to see the sun rise above the clouds, which was just so beautiful. To be honest, I think the sunrise would have looked the same at the summit that it did on Sixth Station, because we were still above the clouds, so the only difference is, is they maybe got to see the sunrise a little bit later than we did. For us, it just wasn't worth battling the crowds to try and see a good sunrise, because the chance of you actually getting a perfect sunrise is pretty slim, and it might just be worth just hiking, not having to worry about the time, and you can just stop and enjoy the sunrise on your own. The best thing was as well, was that we were completely on our own for the sunrise. So we were able to stay there, walk around, take pictures, didn't have to worry about anybody else. So it was a really special moment. So like I said, we stayed at the fifth station at a capsule hotel, and if you're interested, I'll link it below. I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of an idea what it's like to hike all of Mount Fuji, which I highly suggest that you do, because I feel like you get a lot more authentic experience. I also know that there's lots of things that I didn't cover, so if you have any additional questions, just write them in the comments below and I will answer them. See you next time!